Welcome to the Sewing Whisperer. This video tutorial shows how to create a cover stitch pattern brush for fashion tech sketches in Adobe Illustrator. This brush is often found on menswear sweats and in this example is on the hem of the hood and around the dropped armholes. We're now going to create a cover stitch brush and I'd just like to go over what the cover stitch does. So the cover stitch machine, you can buy a domestic machine that would just produce the variations of the first stitch. You can have it wider or narrower, or you can have the three stitches in. But if you're using an industrial cover stitch machine, you have the option to put what's known as the actual cover stitch over the top. So it's a decorative stitch that sits over the top and it can have that central row in the middle or it can just have a row of stitching on each side without the central row of stitching in the middle. So there are a number of variations of cover stitch stitches. So we're going to create this one here. I brought in some artwork that you can copy. So I'll just zoom up on that area because you really need to have a bit of an understanding of where we're going as we, we draw this. So I'm zooming right up. So the first thing, I'd like to create a cover stitch layer. So I brought that artwork in on a cover stitch layer. I had the, that example I was just showing you on a separate layer, just called variation. So for you, you'll just have the straight stitch, which we produced in a previous video, and now the cover stitch. So with the cover stitch, what we're going to do is grab the rectangle tool and just click. And then we're going to type in the width point 06 and the height to 0.12. The mine's defaulting to that and I'll say OK and bring the stroke to the front and we'll color the stroke just a light gray and set the stroke weight to 0.1. Now this is the bounding box so it's a quirky little uh, thing that Adobe Illustrator needs when you're going to repeat something. So this to create that brush you actually repeat this tile and so this is giving the bounding box so Illustrator knows where to repeat from. So once we've got that drawn we'll now set our stroke back to black and we'll set our stroke weight to 0.2 and draw a line using the pen tool. Just click right on the corner, hold shift and click on the other corner. Now with that line We'll set on this in the stroke palette rounded caps and round join. Not really relevant because you can't actually turn a corner with a cover stitch machine and that settings for turning corners. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is drag a copy of that line. So we'll select it, hold the optional Alt key and then drag a copy down to the bottom. Then we'll drag, click again hold option or alt and drag a copy to the center. Now, if you've got your smart guides on, view smart guides, make sure that's ticked because that will help you with this next step. So click hold, hold option or alt and drag down. And when you get to the center, the smart guide will tell you that you've reached the center and let go. And then we're going to tick dashed and I'd like that set to 0.4 and 0.6 for the dash. The next thing we're going to do is draw this artwork. Now I would like, if you haven't got your rulers showing, Command or Control R will bring up your rulers. And I'm going to click and drag down a guide just below that line at the bottom. So now when I'm drawing that artwork, I want it to start on that line. So I'll get my pen tool, I'll line that up with that central point there click hold and you can hold shift to keep the handles perpendicular and then we'll come up just come above that line a little bit click drag then we'll come right up the top just outside a little bit click drag come back click drag and then right back into this corner matching that corner and come down to your um, guideline and click drag and you can hold shift as well there. Now I'll set that to black and a stroke weight of 0.2, the same as what we had before.
and then you can just spend a moment uh, making it look a little bit more like the other example. Now I really would like it to lean slightly to the left. It just looks a little bit more realistic when it's doing that. And the reason I wanted the guide at the bottom is if I was to select all of this artwork, hold Option or Alt and drag a copy to the side, I want to know that that's going to flow through at the bottom so that bottom curve will join and flow through and I think that looks like it's going to be pretty good. So I'll just Command Z to undo that. So that's just a way of checking that you've got a flow through in there. Okay, so now the artwork's drawn. We need to go back to the bounding box, select it, empty out the fill. And just to be safe, it should be the bottom layer because it was the first thing we drew, but just to make sure that it is, we'll say Object, Arrange, Centre Back. Then we'll select all of that artwork. We don't want to get the guide though, so just select slightly above that guide. And then over in the brushes, click the plus, and we're going to call this Pattern Brush, OK. And this is going to be called Cover Stitch. And we'll set the outside corner to auto-centered and the inside corner to auto-centered. And then we'll set the colorization method to tint so that it can be colored if necessary. Then let's do a, a trial. So we'll draw a line and fill it with that stroke. We really need black as well. There we go. So we've reproduced that. Well, not reproduced, we've produced the variation of this. And of course, you can always change the stroke weight of that to 0.75 or 0.5 depending on the size of the text sketch that you may be applying it to. I'll leave it at one for the purposes of this so save your file and that's the finish of producing the cover stitch that's got the actual cover on it. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button and give this a thumbs up if you'd like to see more videos.